Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Painting at Home. I am Jean Moss and I found this little fluffer on the street yesterday. This is Fuzzball. How wonderful. Nice to meet everyone, Fuzzball. She just wanted to say hello. She's a beautiful creature and I love beautiful creatures and finding them in nature. We are going to have a wonderful day painting today, so let's get started. Are you ready to paint? Yes. Here we go. So today is a wonderful day because I have gotten so many people writing in and saying, Jean, we really want to know more about your childhood. What got you starting to paint? And that's a wonderful question because the first thing that I thought about was a very special bush that my mother used to have in her garden. It was the rose bush in my mother's garden. So I thought today would be all about the bush. And that's what we're going to paint today is a lovely rose bush right here on this beautiful canvas. So I've got my paints, I've got all of my materials and a few special surprises today. So let's go ahead and get started on that bush. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my little brush. The bush of a rose bush has all these little branches and then the branches have little thorns. And then of course we've got the beautiful roses. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna just get started with that. So I thought something fun we might do would be to draw, oh, let's do a little planter to start. And I'm feeling like the planter is a gray color because what I remember about this planter was that it was a little bit of stone. So we're gonna just draw a planter right here. Very simple, and I'm using a wonderful gray marker. And it's just kind of an oval type planter, not unlike the bowl we drew for our macaroni and cheese. And this is just gonna go right off the page, right off the page. Look at that. And I'm using the thicker side of the marker, and there's our planter. That's what we're starting with today, is the planter. So I'm gonna make this line nice and thick because you know how much I love big, thick, and girthy lines. So that's what we're going to do today, is just big, thick, girthy lines to make sure that we capture every little essence of this bush. Here we go, we're just drawing down. All I'm doing is just simply going over what I've already drawn. And this is the planter. This is the planter that our wonderful bush is gonna go in. And I'm using the marker just to outline. And it's very simple, just like that. Now, one other thing I remember about this planter is that it had all sorts of little doodads on it. So we're gonna draw just a couple little swirly dads. Swirly doos. Here's one swirly do. And another little swirly do. Oh, and how about one down here? Why not? And you can draw little swirly doos anywhere you want. Oh, there goes our little fuzzball. There she is. Oh, very noisy indeed. Okay, so now we've got our little swirly doos. So now our planter is outlined. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to start painting in the planter. So I've got my very trusty colors here, and then I've got my little guy. This is our little guy. So I'm going to get him nice and wet, nice and wet, and we're just starting the planter for our bush which will be a rose bush. Now I've got this wonderful gray color that I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm just gonna use this gray color. It's so wonderful. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of this iridescence. We love that word, iridescence. And we're just gonna go over our little planter. This is our planter. And I imagine, now last week, we talked a lot about painting with oils. So you can paint with oils anytime. And we did a lilac bush last week, a lilac bush. And this week we're doing, as I said, uh, a rose bush. It is all about the bush today. Oh, I remember my mother's bush. And it was just so beautiful in the garden there. Sometimes we would, my sister Joni and I, we would just go and sit there, tell stories about the bush and just be under the bush and it was just wonderful. So I'm just gonna go over this planter and I'm using my little guy just to get a little bit of texture and then I think I'll go over it with my big Jimmy brush. Here we go. So we're just going right over this. Look at that, that's wonderful. And I'm just drawing a little bit of texture, everyone. It's so easy to do. Again, you can just use that broad stroke. Completely up to you. Iridescence, a little bit of that gray is just capturing this marble so beautifully. Or maybe it was stone, I don't totally remember. But you can draw whatever you want. Maybe yours is marble, who knows? Up to you, up to you. It's just a very, very quick little stroke here. There we go, and I'm using this iridescence and just a little bit 
of the gray, just to capture that stone. Isn't that nice? Look at that. I found Fuzzball just in the alleyway the other day. Oh, she's just been an absolute rascal. Absolute rascal. Let's give her what she wants. There you are, Fuzzball. Off you go. Look at that. Now, those of you just tuning in, we are drawing here a wonderful bush. It is the rose bush that used to live in my mother's garden. And this wonderful planter. So we're getting the planter going first. Today is indeed the day of the bush. I invite you to find a bush, oh, somewhere in your life. Whatever you think. I'm just finishing off the planter because we want to make sure we have the home for our bush first. Every bush needs a good home. That's what I think. Common saying in my household, every bush needs a good home. There we go. And now I'm going to draw a little bit darker on the inside here. I'm going to use a little bit of black on the inside just to capture a little bit of that shade. Just turning out so wonderfully. And as you know, this is a planter. Planters can be very ornate, and this one indeed was very ornate. So we're just drawing back and forth here. And this was one of the plants that I remember taking a little sketch pad. Oh, and I would just go and draw all sorts of things. Sometimes I was drawing, oh, I don't know, vans, cars and trucks and the like. There we go. So there's our planter, everyone. And once again, I'm just kind of going over this with shade, just to create a little bit of shading here, just to give it indication that there's some light somewhere in this picture. Here we go. All right, so there's our planter. And now the fun part, we get to get started on that bush. I cannot wait. I do love a good bush. As much as I love a good tree, I love a good bush. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start because if you've ever seen a rose bush, which I have, just this one, but it was very beautiful and very, very breathtaking, and recently on Google, uh, what I'm going to do is take a, a little brown and we're just gonna draw a bunch of lines. As you know, I love drawing lines. Follow the rest, guys. All right, so now we've got our Iridescent bronze. I've got a little bit of brown. I'm just going to draw all the way up all sorts of different lines. And then what we'll do is we're going to add a little leaf and, of course, our roses. And I've got a very special sort of material for that. Something we've used before, but I think it would just be perfect. And I'm just drawing these wonderful lines upwards. You can draw whichever way you want to. Upwards, who knows? And these kind of crisscross. So, what I'm going to do then making my brush very moist for our bush and we're going to go oh through and upwards and outwards and a couple of these are just going to go boop and boop there we go so we've got a lot of these wonderful lines and you get to play around with lines because lines can be any shape you want them to be and how about one that goes a little bit wider out here and there's the beginning of our bush all right look at that now is the fun part we are going to add some greens to our bush that means big guys coming out. Big old Jimmy here. How are you doing today, Jim? Jimbo. Okay. So I'm going to use a very rich green. I've got a few different kinds of green, which is what I love about this whole painting palette I've created here. So we've got this wonderful rich dark green, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of brown. Because one thing about rose leaves is there is some brown to them. And we're just using the whole horizontal brush there, and we're just going to go down. And these are the leaves. Very simple. Very simple today. I need a little bit more moisture on my brush for my bush. A brush for the bush, imagine that. Imagine that, play on words. Here we go, so we're just drawing, adding some leaves. And I love this part because leaves are so sparse. They can really be whatever you want. So really, you don't even have to look at the page if you don't want to. Completely up to you. Here we go, I've got just seven different shades of green. And we're just gonna go to town on this bush. I'm just gonna dig right into the bush. Here we go. Again, your bush can be whatever you want it to be. However bushy, however sparse, completely up to you, it is your bush. So I invite you to play around with bush drawing. It's so easy. And again, we're just using all these different greens. And I'm not even throwing little iridescence and oh, we're just gonna play with this bush because that's, I think, what bushes really are for, to play. Here we go, all about the bush. As I said before, this was a bush that used to 
continues to grow in my mother's garden. So I really, it really was my mother's bush. Her baby bush, we used to call it. Little bushy baby. Here we go, we're just drying. Oh, let's make sure we don't get too much color down here. That's all right though. We're gonna just get a little bit. Make sure we dab. There we go. I'm just gonna get rid of that. There we go. And you can completely just, if you end up having too wet of a brush, too wet of a bush, you can always just wipe it right off, which is what I've just done. It's very simple to do. Just take your hand or whatever you want, wipe it right off, no problem. And maybe there's a leaf down here. Maybe that's what that becomes. Easy enough. That's why we love watercolors, because watercolors, you really just do whatever you want with them. Very simple stuff. Here we go, especially on something as erratic as a bush. So I'm taking all these different greens. Let's make sure that doesn't fall there. There we go. Again, if it's too wet, no problem. Sometimes bushes get very, very moist, and that is very normal for a bush. So, we're just drawing all these wonderful leaves. It almost looks a little bit like a fern, so what we'll do is go back maybe and add some just definition to our leaves. And maybe make this fall down a little bit on this side and into here. There we go, look at that, that's beautiful. So now we've got our leaves, this is so wonderful. These are our leaves, and the next thing, the best part ever, I am going to use a new material. Let's give this a moment just to chill out and dry, and then first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of background. So I think this bush lives in a garden. And of course, in the garden, we have all sorts of different greeneries, but most importantly, we have our trees. So let's jump on back. I'm gonna let my leaves dry before we add our little details. And let's draw maybe a tree in the background. Here we go. That's wonderful. So here's a tree just in the background, totally separate. There we go. You know I always love to add trees. And as I said, this lived in a garden. So there were trees, of course, in the garden. And I've had a lot of experience with trees. So we're just gonna keep on drawing some trees up. We've got bush, and I think, if I remember correctly, there were two just big old trees right on either side of that bush. So we're gonna make two trees. One of them was a little bit darker than the other. So we're just gonna play around with some colors today. Here's the one tree. And again, I'm just drawing up. You can do whatever you want. The sky's the limit here. I'm just drawing up. And this is our tree. Just coming all the way up to the top. There we go. And of course we have to plant our tree, so there is some ground. Definitely a little bit of ground down here. There we go. A little bit of ground. Let's get that going. Wonderful. And of course our tree. If I recall, this was a pe this is a tree we used to spend a lot of time sitting underneath and just looking up underneath the tree. So I want to make sure I get that nice little sort of background there. That's wonderful. And then we'll let that just kind of go across. Maybe to the other side. Look at that. I'm just creating a surface along which the bush lives. Again, every good bush needs a home. Now I remember there was a tree also on the other side. And I invite you to look into your own childhood. Maybe there was a bush or a tree or something that you used to sit under. Who knows? Two trees, one bush. Look at that. And that's what I remember. And my sister Joni would sit under one, and I would sit under the other, and we would just throw oranges at each other. Imagine that. Kids being kids. Throwing fruit around the garden. Why not? Two big old trees, and Joni would lie under this side. Let's get that ground going. Here we go. That's Joni's tree, and then Jean's tree on the other side. Look at that. Running into some ground. And then, of course, we have our wonderful bush right in the middle. Let's add some greenery to that. Now, my brush is already pretty darn moist. Having a very moist day at the studio moisture. So we're just going to draw that tree right here. There we go. I'm actually going to use a stroke for this tree. Let's just stroke it right up. There we go. There we go. And then you can add some texture afterwards. There we go. Look at beautiful green. That's one tree. And then of course Jean's tree on the other side. And who knows, maybe there's an orange somewhere. There's another tree. Beautiful. And then of 
course, our bush right in the middle. Now comes the fun part because we are going to add some roses to our bush. And what better way to do that than a new type of paint? This is, of course, nail polish, but I figured what a wonderful way to capture some beautiful red. So we're just going to go ahead and start drawing our roses. There's one. <clears throat> some of them are bigger than others in our bush. There we go. There's another. Such a wonderful material now, this type of polish. Now, it does go on your fingernails, but we're going to use it just as a little paint today. Because why not? These are roses, and it's just creating such a nice little texture. Now, some of the roses opened up, some of them didn't. So maybe up here, we have a bigger flower. Here we go. Look at that. That's so wonderful. Good. We're just going to draw maybe like a little doodad down here. Maybe a couple little what they call buds. And there's our bush. It's just coming together so nicely, and you can just use these little tiny patterns little tiny patterns. Look at that. Here we go. We're just drawing up our rose bush. Look at that. This is just wonderful. Okay, now let's go ahead and draw maybe one up here. Maybe this is the queen of the bush. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, we're just going to draw a couple more like this. Sometimes this bush grew lots and lots of flowers, and sometimes it grew no flowers. Bushes can be very finicky. You never want to push a bush. You just want to let it do what it's going to do. There's the other one. A couple more little doodads here growing out of the side. There we go. I think we have one more, everybody. Do right over here. And again, this is just such an easy technique. All you need to do is find a polish that goes on your fingernails. I think we have one more. I'm feeling one right here, everybody. Feeling one right there. Maybe just a bud, though. Maybe just a bud. Of course. Look at how wonderful. I think we finish off with a little bit of sky. Let's have a look at that. Now, we have to have something down here, and I'm thinking it's going to be greens. Now, we already have Big Guy over here, so we're just going to go ahead and dab that dry. Very moist today, my Big Guy. There we go. And we have a little bit of that green. Here we go. And how about a little bit of this lovely sort of emerald type green? Oh, I love a good emerald green. We're just going to draw it all the way across. All the way across. Just for some greens. I do love the color green. There we go. Very simple technique. Just a broad stroke. Broad stroke here. And then, of course, we'll finish off with our sky. So we've got a big old bush here. Again, I invite you to look around your childhood yard. You just see what you can find. For us, it was our mother's beautiful bush that grew wonderful roses on it. And of course, we've drawn that here today. And now I think we must add a little bit of sky in the background. I don't know about you, but I think that's appropriate because outside does have some sky. So why don't we grab a little bit of blue? How about some of that white? And I have this wonderful lighter blue. And we're just going to draw across beautiful sky. And it's going to kind of just run right into our trees, but the trees don't mind. They don't seem to mind. There we go. And I'm running into the bush, everybody, but I'm missing just the flowers because those have not dried yet. It's also a different type of paint, so you want to be very careful when you are painting and you don't run into different materials. Just be mindful. But the leaves don't seem to mind. They don't seem to mind at all. Rich blue. We love that blue. Here we go. We're just kind of filling in here. Just getting a little bit of blue sky. Look at that. So wonderful. Oh, I remember just tossing oranges back and forth. And sometimes the oranges would start to juice all over your face. It happens every so often when you eat an orange. Look at that light. Especially under a wonderful tree and near a bush. You never know what kind of moisture is going to come out of the earth. You just never know. Here we go. Look at that. Just finishing up here. Just a simple painting today. Anyone can do it. Anyone can do it. There are two big trees there. One final thing I would like to do is add a little bit of texture to our trees. So they've dried enough. 
Now remember with watercolor, when you add a little bit of texture, you want to make sure that your underpaint has already dried. There we go. Let's add a little bit of just a little bit of grass but I'm using a dark color to indicate that the grass is a little bit further back. Maybe just a little brush, who knows? Who knows? We've got our bush between two trees. This is shaping up to be one of my favorite paintings. I don't know about you. Maybe you have a favorite painting. Who knows? I'm just going to grab a little bit more of that green, everybody. We've got one final little thing to do. And I think this painting is complete today. I'm just going to paint this up. There we go. Just add a little bit of texture. Finish out those trees. Let them grow up into the sky. We've got our planter. And I call this painting Two Trees in a Bush. Look at that. Just majestic. And if you dig your nose right into those flowers, you're going to smell beautiful rose. And of course, the trees that my sister and I used to sit under back and forth, various fruits, plain catch. There's Joni's tree and Jean's tree. Wonderful. And the beautiful bush. Mm. forgot you were there. I was enjoying the bush just so much. I invite you all to think back to your childhood or maybe just walk outside. See if you can find any plants or flowers or bushes or trees. Whatever you can find, I recommend finding a bush and just staring at it. It's such a wonderful thing to look at and wonderful thing to imagine. So thank you all so much for joining us today here at Painting at Home. I am Jean Moss. Have a wonderful and bushy day.